Good morning, good morning, good morning, you lovely lot. I haven't spoken to the camera properly for days. Days. I don't think I even filmed very much last week. But I have dipped in. There are going to be bits that I'll have put in vlogs, little dip-ins here and dip-ins there of things that have been going on. But it is Wednesday morning. It is 20 past 7. I'm at this pet sit that I've been doing for Indy the dog and Mimi the cat. And it's all gone very, very well. It's all been very lovely. We've had some funny things happen. I thought I would share them with you. Mimi humps everything. Yep. So that's quite interesting in itself. Um, I will insert a little bit of footage here of... This was at the end of a wonderful song that I love, November Rain by Guns N' Roses. And I had been thoroughly enjoying listening to the music, but out of the corner of my eye, this is all I could see. Well, India's just successfully completely ruined November Rain song for me because that is what was playing. And that's what I've had to look at whilst it's been playing. I love that song, but you've ruined it for me. Absolutely ruined it, Indy. Yeah. <laughs> I have no words. Um, and that's how Indy spends a lot of his time, actually, entertaining himself. Um, I've now learnt how to get him to go for a walk. He does several things. One, he's not a big walker, which... I'm not used to because obviously my boys will be out bouncing around all over the place and, and I'm used to dogs that want to go for long walks. Um, it does make life easy not having to go for a very, very long walk. But Indy will do this thing where he will literally just lay down flat on the floor and refuse to move. And I spoke to his owners and I said, you know, he keeps doing this. And she said, yeah, it's usually because of a stick. Might have got a bit of stick stuck on his fluff. And at one point he was hurt quite badly, he hurt himself with a stick, um, got caught up in his fur and then he was running it, made him sore. And so he's very, if something gets caught in his fur while he's out, and of course everything's, all his fur touches the floor, bless him, um, then he, he just stops. So that might have been it. But also I noticed yesterday when I walked him, no, not yesterday, the day before, I went and took him out for a nice walk. And again, he just stopped and lay down. And every time I managed to get him to go up and I walked forwards, he'd do it again. So I got up and walked a different way and he basically just wanted to go home. That was what it was. And as soon as we were facing home, he walked beautifully. The minute I tried to divert off into a different direction, he just lay back down again and refused to move. So that was fun. <laughs> I've learned if he doesn't want to go for a walk, I'm not going to force it. <sighs> He's He's got such character. He really does have such character. So upstairs in the bedroom, they have a, like one of these beds that is split into two halves and each bit will move individually. Like, you know, you can get the knees to come up and get the head to come up. You know, you can just move parts of the bed. Um, and I haven't played with that at all. Um, and I haven't worked out where the remote controls were and they're actually at the side of the bed. I thought maybe there was a control under the bed because the other morning I was woken up with the bed starting to do this funny folding motion <laughs> with me in it um, and just assumed that the cat had walked on the controller somewhere because they also have these funny night lights that come on so when you step out of bed the night lights come on and one side of the bed the night light just kept coming on and off and on and off in the middle of the night so I was like oh the cat must be under the bed. Um, but when again, when I mentioned this yesterday to my friend whose house this is, she was like, oh, OK, on my side of the bed, she said, which is the side nearest the window. I, it did that to me the other day. And it usually means the batteries are running out on the controllers. So I changed the batteries, but I didn't do my other half's side of the bed because um, I thought it'd be funny if it folded up on him. And, and uh, basically, you know, it would be a giggle. And, he, you know, to have that happen. I said, oh, it's funny because that's the side I'm sleeping on, her husband's side. So she was like, I'm really sorry you got the, the folding mechanism going off on you. That was booby trapped. <laughs> so it wasn't the cat at all. Um, she just hadn't changed the batteries. 
in his controller so that she could laugh when it folded him up. <laughs> they have such a fun relationship, they do. Oh, they're so they're such a good couple. Um so yeah, I've had a couple of just funny little things that have happened while I've been here. Um but yeah, I'm gonna drink my tea now. I've got uh I've got about 25 minutes and then I need to get in the car the roads are bad again because we've had so much rain it's flooding so I need to get in the car and have enough time to drive to work so I'm not in the village I'm in a different village um oh and spog the spog update so I don't think I've really spoken to the camera about spog have I I don't know I'll find out when I'm editing since I got back from my trip with Daryl and Keith where he was making that awful noise. And I was hoping above all hope it was a turbo again. But, because that's under warranty. But, of course, you know, that had been properly fixed. And a brand new pipe. It was unlikely to be that. Anyway. Turned out the engine had been starved of oil. Not that I was doing anything. It had got oil in it. It's just the um, mechanism that distributes the oil around where it needs to be was not working properly um, and that had caused damage. Something had broken inside, which is what that noise was. It was pushing air around the van and um, basically to take it apart, change the fuel pump and any broken bits and sort of see if that fixed it would cost pretty much the same as sourcing a new engine because he was basically saying it needs a whole bottom end rebuild. Um, so he'd sourced an engine that's done 51,000 miles with full service history, seen it running. Um, so that is less, that's 34 plus thousand miles less than Spog's actually done on the old engine. And less than I actually bought Spog on, I bought Spog on at 53,000 miles. So I've currently got an engine that's done 51,000 miles. Um... Yeah, that was, so he sourced that and then of course put all the new parts that I'd had put on Spog originally, like the turbo, injectors, various other things, steering pump, stuff like that, all onto this engine. I've now got a box of spare parts of things I've salvaged from the other engine in case we have this issue, you know, any more issues, which I really, really hope we haven't. And they've basically given Spog a new engine. But with the labour, you know, the hours of work that's cost, a new cam belt uh, kit, because obviously if I'm having the engine taken apart, you put the cam belt in, don't you? New cam belt. And everything else, that's cost me just shy of two grand. He just eats. I'm literally, I've got nothing left. I'd saved up money hoping that it wouldn't go on the van and hoping that I could spend it on getting some electrics put in the conservatory, Christmas presents, paying my tax bill in January, maybe even something towards some carpets for the stairs because it's all rotten and ripping and needs replacing. And sadly, Spog's just completely absorbed the entire and some savings that I had. There we go. But I drove Spog yesterday and my good lord, the engine is so smooth. It sounds great and it doesn't chug at all. When you first start it, Spog had that kind of like diesel -y, I don't want to be, you know, a bit sluggish. I don't want to be going anywhere. This engine just fired it up smooth straight away. Every single junction, no issue, just smooth so smooth so hopefully this will keep me going for many years to come right i am going to drink my tea now that i've done a catch up this very wordy 10 minute start to video that's half a video that is so i'm not sure what more you will see on this video but i just thought it was about time we had a catch up how are you anyway how are you i haven't asked you that how are you doing Everyone good? Everyone healthy? Those of you that are in America dealing with this huge, great big Cat 5 hurricane or whatever it is, how are you guys doing? You alright? Stayed safe? 
That was your home, hopefully in one piece. <sighs> some big stuff going on out there. Hi, you coming out for some breakfast? Maybe. It's not quite morning anymore. It's actually afternoon and it's Thursday. It's a bit windy as you can hear. I'm trying to get Autumn's attention. But she doesn't want to come over here where it's wet, I don't think. Autumn! Or is she a bit limpy? Oh, she might be a bit limpy, actually. Well, she's let me have a cuddle. I don't know what's wrong. I think she might just be a bit stiff. Right then, Nelly, your coat is gorgeous. Look at that. So beautiful. So beautiful. Like a big fluffy teddy bear, aren't you? Nelly. Nelly knew. <laughs> I didn't see you there. <laughs> Hello, lovelies. Oh, oh, I'm getting mobbed now. Did you want a cuddle? Did you want a cuddle? No, there's nothing in that pocket for you. Hello, Ziggy. Hello, Nelly. I know. I know. Hi. I'll try to remember who is who. Haven't I? Fraser has got the white, like that, and I'm assuming Adam's over there, so you're Darcy, aren't you? I still get the babies mixed up. Oh, you're really hugging me. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you. The dogs are playing chase in the field. Hi. I'm going for a nice cuddle. No, don't stop pouring me, Nelly, please. Please don't pour me. So loving, just so loving. You've got this lovely coat, haven't you? Yes, you have. You tell him. Hello, Fraser. You're right, lovely. You good boy. Oh yes. I know. Stop pouring me. <laughs> right, who else have we got? Hope and Pearl. We got Maggie over there with Adam, cuddling her baby. Hi, are we having a snuggle? Thanks. I'm gonna smell so much like a sheep when I get in, aren't I? Oh, I know you like cuddles. Thanks, love. I'm gonna eat my hair now. Thanks. Don't burp in my ear. Hello, babies. Hello, babies. That's not pouring me. Hey, and Ziggy. Oh, and thanks, Nelly. Stop. Pouring me! Look, you're making me all muddy. Stop it! I don't want to be poured. You were getting attention. Stop it now. Stop it now. Can you leave the poo alone? Stop rolling in poo. Okay, that's bound to be fox poo, isn't it? Right, away. You're going to stink. Hi. Being followed. Being followed by Fraser. currently heating up a Spanish butter bean stew for my lunch. I'm going to pop a little bit of cheese on the top. I've eaten all of my four brand, my four cheeses. Um, it comes with like mozzarella and um, one of the orange cheeses and cheddar and stuff. Um, that's my absolute favourite cheese when I have the, the four brand, the four mix. But um, I've eaten it all. So this smells really nice, it's got a proper like Spanish smell to it. The dogs have all enjoyed their walk. I've probably got, I don't know what time is to be fair, I've probably got an hour to eat this and then get back to work and go and get Ozzy. Drop the dogs off as well, I think, and take them home. There we go, that is my lunch, a bit of cheese on it. That is what I've bought. Oh. Link's so tired. Did we break you today, Linky? Wore yourself out. You're having a mad moment. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> go, go, go. Meow. Meow, meow, meow. I think the dogs heard you. All right, up there. Indy, quiet now. Oh. Hi, did you miss?
kiss me. Oh, hush now. Shh. Um, do you do this while I'm at work? Is that what you do? Do you do that to my toothbrush? No, not my toothbrush. I've been putting that in my mouth. Ha, ha, ha.